It's Jay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this flat stitch beadwork using the two needle method. I'll also be showing you how to make them into earrings. Here's everything that you'll need. Today I'm using size 11 seed beads as well as size 11 hex beads. You don't have to use these, they're just a different type of bead. These ones are more square cut and then these ones are more of a round cut. I also have some B7000 glue, but you can use any type of super glue that you want. And then I also have some banding. This is optional, but it just gives that nice edge around your beadwork. And then I have these centers. These are Swarovski centers, but you can use anything. I got these from Hobby Lobby and they're just sticker sheets and there's a lot of other stuff that you can use as well. You'll also need a pair of scissors and some flat back earring posts. You'll also need two needles and these are size 12 beading needles. And I'm also using size D Nymo beading thread. The last thing you'll need is stiff felt to bead on. I got this 15 pack on Amazon. And these will last you a really long time. You can also try regular felt. Regular felt isn't as sturdy, but it's a good thing to start out with if you're just learning how to bead. You can also use quilt backing as well. Just anything sturdy enough to bead on. So this is what I'm going to do first, is cut out a piece of this felt. And basically, you will place your rhinestones or whatever you're using a little bit further down on the material. You can cut out perfect squares or a shape if you want. I usually just eyeball it, but for this demonstration, I'll just draw out a rectangle. And also, if you've already finished your other side, you can just use it to measure out your other side. Be sure to give yourself enough extra room because you never know what you're going to end up doing or what your design might end up looking like. So I always like to give myself a couple extra inches on each side. Now once you have your piece cut out, you're just going to lay out some of your beads. Whenever you get out beads, it's usually best to do it in smaller increments. You can always get out more later. Now we're going to get our thread and thread our needles. For this, you'll need about an arm's length. The easiest way to thread your needle is by pinching the thread between your index finger and your thumb and then bring it down as far as you can and then place your needle onto the thread. And I usually leave a little tail like this. And then on the other end of the thread, we're going to tie a double knot. You can do three or four knots if you want to. So needle one is going to be just like this with a little tail and a knot on the end. And then we're going to grab about the same amount of thread for the other side, about an arm's length. For needle two, it will be a little different. For this one, you're going to bring your needle all the way to the center of your thread. So instead of leaving a tail like our last one, we're going to bring the needle all the way to the middle of the thread. So you can see needle two is in the middle of this thread. Now just line the ends up and tie a double knot. You can pull your needle to the middle of the thread after it's tied. So now you have your second needle. Now that we have our needles threaded, we're going to take needle two and we're going to attach our centerpiece. So this one that I have has little holes in it 
but don't worry if yours doesn't have any. I have these little turquoise pieces that don't have holes and usually I just glue those down the night before with the B7000 glue and just let them dry for a few hours. Try to place your centerpiece in the middle. Once you get your needle through, you're just going to tack it down. And I like to tack it down twice, so it's extra secure. And then we go to the other side, and this is where it tends to move a little bit, so just try to keep it as straight as you can. Now what we're going to do is use the same needle, needle 2. This needle will hold our beads. Needle 1 will be our tacking needle. Now you'll take needle 2 and come back up to the front and you'll want to get pretty close to your centerpiece. And then we're going to pick up some beads. So for this pattern, I have one row of silver and then a row of white and silver. So I'm just going to pick up 10 of the silver beads with needle 2. And then I bring them all the way down on my needle. And you can see how they'll line up next to your centerpiece. Needle 2 is essentially just your bead holding needle. Now you can put needle 2 to the side. Something that helps me keep my beads where I want them is to place them and then hold them with my fingernail. And then I'm going to take needle 1 and I'm going to come up next to my first bead, in between my first two beads. So in between like this, I'm going to come through and then I'm going to go back down to the other side directly across. So still in between those two beads. This is going to tack down your bead in its place. You can see how the thread just goes in between the two beads. And that is essentially the two needle method. So you're just using one needle to hold your beads and the other needle to tack them down. This is an easier way to make sure that your work is very clean and stays in its place. So we're just going to go in between these two and then on the other side in the same spot. Sometimes your thread will go over to the wrong side, but you can just move it with your fingernail over to where it's supposed to be and then pull down. You can see how it just keeps them in place. So now whenever I move, the first two beads are tacked down. So we'll just continue down this line, going back and forth in between each bead. And you don't have to tack down every single bead. You can also skip a bead or two if you'd like. It's totally up to your preference. This process is a little more time consuming than other beading methods, but I feel like it really just gives you the best results. Now that I've reached the end of my 10 beads, I'm going to pick up needle two and then pick up 10 more beads and just repeat the same process. So I'll bring the beads down and then set my needle away and I'll guide my beads where I want them. Now that I'm nearing the end, I'm going to measure out how many beads I need to match up with the end. It's about four now. 
I'm going to continue tacking these down and the only difference with this last row is that whenever I get to the very last two beads, I'm going to use my needle and go back up through the next couple of beads on the row. So now before tacking this down, I'm going to take needle two and I'm going to go up through about three or four of the next beads. And then you just pull everything through to connect. And then I'll go back in and just tack down these last couple of beads. Now what I like to do is use some B7000 glue and glue down these edges. So since it's just secure at the top, the edges can kind of come up a little bit. So all you need to do is just take some of your glue and place it on the back side of your gem. And then on the other side and then just press and hold to secure. Now that we've finished our first row and tacked down the centerpiece, we're going to start on our second row. So to do that, you wanna be on the back side of your material. So if you're on the front here, all you need to do is poke your needle through to get to the back side. And then we're going to use this same needle, so needle two, to come up close to this next row, just like the last one that we did. And you can start anywhere, but usually when dealing with a teardrop shape, I like to start on the side rather than the very top. That way everything lines up right. And we'll come up right here and then pull your needle all the way through. And then we're just going to repeat the same steps as the last time. So picking up your beads, the only difference with this row is that I have white and silver. So all I'll do is just pick up 10 beads in a different order. So white, silver, white, silver. And then I'll take those beads all the way down and repeat the same process. So you'll just place them where you want and then tack them down with needle one. Now I've reached the end of my second row and I'm just going to finish it all off with one bead. And sometimes you don't have to tack, tack it down if it sits right. So just going through these next couple of beads, pulling it through, and I'm just gonna leave it like this. You can bring your needle all the way to the back to tack it down. So the next thing we're going to do is end it with this banding. And this step is optional, but I really like how the banding looks and it just makes everything sparkle. So the same thing goes for the banding. We're going to tack it down individually, just as we would the beads. And I usually do the same thing where I start on the edge here, hold it with my fingernail, and then use my needle to go up next to it and then tack it down on the opposite side. And you'll just continue this all the way around. Now, if any point you get to where your thread is really short, which usually whenever it's about this short is whenever I will stop and make a new one, just because I don't wanna to have to deal with it if it's much shorter than this, it can be a lot, diff a lot more difficult. But all you have to do is just make sure that you're on the back side 
And then you're going to put your needle through one of these loops, or it can be through the actual felt as well. And then just pull it through, and we're going to make a knot. So just pull your needle through this loop that you just made. And then I usually do this twice. And then you'll just take your scissors and cut it off. Now you're going to need to either thread the needle that you just cut, or what I like to do at this point is just use my other needle, needle one, to, content to continue tacking everything down. So we'll just go back in and tack everything down. Now that I've reached the end, I'm going to measure out how much of this I'm going to need and then cut the rest off. So you can either cut here or add an extra, but I think I'm going to add an extra just because, just in case. And then we'll continue tacking these down and just make sure that they all fit in right. Now all we have to do is end our thread on the back side, the same way we did when we were starting a new one. And just create a couple of knots. And then just cut your end. And then if your banding is sticking out like this, what I like to do is put a little bit of super glue and you can bend your piece kind of in half so it comes up a little. And then put a little bit of super glue in between. And then connect the two pieces and I'll just hold it with my fingernails together for just a second. And there we go. Now that we have both sides done, we're going to move on to edging, backing, and creating the actual earring. So we're just going to take our scissors and cut around our pieces. Be sure to leave a good border when you're cutting. You don't want to get too close to your stitching, and you can always go back and cut off more later. Now you can go back in and cut a little bit more off if you'd like. And this doesn't have to be perfect either. The next step is optional, but I feel like it really makes a big difference for your beadwork. So I'm taking this bubbly container cardboard. This is a great cardboard to use because it's not too thick like regular cardboard. So anything that you buy from the store that comes in these boxes is a really good material to use. All you're going to do is place your piece on the cardboard. And then you're going to take a pin and trace around it. This will create an outline of your work. And then you're going to go back in and make an outline of the same shape, just a little bit more inward. And you'll do this for both of your pieces. And then what we're going to do is cut out the inner circle. And this piece is going to stabilize in between your work and the backing that you choose. So I'm going to use leather, but you can also use felt or whatever else you might have. And this is just going to stabilize your piece and harden it to make sure that it's not wobbly whenever you're wearing it. Now we're going to take our super glue and put some on the cardboard. And then just place that on the back of your work and make sure that it's in the center and not touching the edges.
Now we take our earring posts and we're going to place them where we want them. Most of the time you want to get as high as you can up on your work. And then you're going to place a little bit of glue. And then place it on the cardboard. After this step, you're going to want to let your piece sit for as long as you can. I also like to take these little clamps and clamp them. That way they're really going to get a good grip and it's going to dry in place without moving. And I'll usually leave this for about 30 minutes to an hour and then come back and do the backing. So for this next step, you'll need something to back your earrings. And today I'm just using this white leather and I'm going to go ahead and take these clamps off. Next, what you're going to do is take your backing of choice and then lay it out similar to the cardboard. We're just going to trace around with a pin. Now I'm going to take a push pin and since our earring is pretty simple and has a simple post, we're just going to poke a hole through the leather. And then you can attach your earring here. And then what I like to do is just keep the earring on while I cut the leather. That way I know that I'm getting a correct cut. Now we're going to thread our needle. And for the edging, I usually like to do what we do for needle two. So having your needle in the middle of the thread. So now that I've got my needle, what we're going to do is come up on the inside layer here, and you can start this wherever as well, but just come up similarly to what we've been doing so close to the banding here. And the reason that we come in between the layers is so that it hides our knot. It's like a little sandwich. So now we're going to pick up three seed beads and then come up from the back side through all the layers. And you want to go a little bit in front of your last stitch. And then pull your needle all the way through. And it's going to look like this. And you can continue this, so just using your three beads and then going around the piece if you want. That's a, another type of edging. But for this one, we're going to go back up through that very last bead and create a stacking effect for our edging. So the only time that you pick up three beads is the very first piece of edging that you're doing. So from here on out, you'll just pick up two beads. And we'll follow the same method as last time. So picking up two beads and then coming up through the back. And if you have a hard time pulling your needle through, you can also use a pair of pliers. And then go through that very last bead again and pull through and just continue this all the way around. Now that I've reached about half of the edging, this is what it looks like. So you can see that the beads started stacking up. Now for the bottom, I'm just going to add some bigger beads to make a nice little effect. 
and I've laid these ones out, this is optional. The only difference with these is that we'll pick up one big bead and then one seed bead, and you'll use a little bit more space in between the beads since they're bigger. And you'll pull through. And then go back up through the seed bead and continue. Once you reach the end of your big beads, you'll just go back to normal edging, so you'll pick up two seed beads and then continue, until you've reached the very end. Now that you've reached the end, you're just going to connect these two pieces by picking up one seed bead and then going down through the next bead. So that very first bead that you started with is the one that you're going downwards. and it connects everything. Now what I like to do is go back through everything, bring my needle all the way through to the back, and then go back up that same bead that we just went down through. So this is gonna stabilize that first bead that we put in. And it will secure it on both sides. Now this is what we have at the end, and now that we've reached the end, all we have to do is hide our thread. So what I like to do is weave it back through the edging, maybe one to four times, one to four beads. So going back through, and this is just going to secure it. And then once I've gone through about three or four of the beads, what I'm going to do is go down through one of these beads. It doesn't have to be a specific one. You just want to weave it through to hide your stitching. And then I'll go down a bead and push it through all the layers back through the back. And once I'm here on the back side, I will go through one of these stitches here and then through the loop and it will make a little knot. And you'll just pull it and secure it and then I'll do that one more time just for extra security. And then I will end by going back up through one of the clear beads. And once you pull it all the way through, you'll just take your scissors and cut off the end. Then you can take a lighter and just burn off that little tail end. And that's how you make flat stitch two needle method earrings. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll do my best to get back with you. Mado, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.